Brian, explosive offense from Wyoming. What uh, what's the biggest challenge defensively against this group? Their quarterback, Nick. I mean, he, he's a great athlete, great competitor. So you know, we got to keep an eye on him. That's the first thing everybody says. The quarterback. What what, what is it about him that, that really impresses you? I mean, he, he's pretty mobile. I mean, he, he he makes play a lot of plays with his feet, and he can throw the ball downfield. I mean, he, he like I said, he's a great athlete, great player. What did Fresno State do to, to limit them in the second half? Show them out of them in the second half. I think they 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 really contained their quarterback. You know, kind of kind of got a grasp grasp on him and kept him kept him in the pocket. So I think they did a really really good job of that. As corners, do you have a response? Responsibility in terms of controlling the, him running, or you just have to stick with your receiver and, and hope someone else takes care of the yeah, rest. We, we let the front seven take care of the quarterback. You know, we we stay on the back on the on the receivers. We stay deep, basically. So you know, he can't just launch downfield on us. You have to be um, you know, on your guy a little bit longer against a guy like this. Yeah, and keep those plays. Yeah, alive. yeah, definitely. You know, you just can't let up during the play. You can think a play is over, and then a receiver takes off downfield and he'll throw it up to him. And we seen him make a lot of plays like that. What about his receiving core? He to? Uh, he, he's thrown to a, to a few guys. You know, he spreads the ball around pretty well. But, he, you know, they got some really decent receivers, too. Does it help the fact that you've seen quite a few of these athletic quarterbacks this year? Yes. So, you know, we, we, we kind of got a grasp on what's coming. You know, we've seen a lot of mobile quarterbacks this year. You guys been on the field for a lot of plays the last couple games, 109 versus Colorado State. What's it been like to all these, all these plays this team run against you guys? Uh, it, it, that's a lot of plays. You know, we just got to have our wind up, and, you know, that, this is where our conditioning comes in. So we, we got to be ready for it, and the guys behind us, you know, that are maybe two of their depth chart got to be ready to play, too. I know you want the offense to score as much as they can, but sometimes they're scoring real quick, and you guys are out there for 15 play drives and stuff. I mean, how do you kind of look at that balance? I mean, we like it. You know, as, as many points as our offense scores, I mean, we, we don't mind being on the field if our offense is putting up that many points. What do you think of the new kind of wave in college football with all these plays and no huddle and just, you know, a lot of teams are running over 100 plays this year, it seems like. I mean, the game of college football is constantly changing, so we just got to adapt to our environment and, and adapt to the uh, game of college football. Any negatives to that? You think more chance of injuries maybe or anything? Or, I mean, how do you kind of look at the – uh, I mean, just the conditioning part. I mean, that's a lot of plays out there. And, uh, it, it, yeah, more plays, more injuries, but hopefully we stay safe. You think you're subbing out more maybe in the secondary more than usual because of the difference in plays? Yes, yes, most definitely. Uh, the secondary, usually, you know, too, don't too many secondaries sub out, but now, I mean, 100 plays is a lot of plays for any guy. So the subs don't do nothing but help us. And I would assume a lot of times you don't want to come out, but I mean, sometimes you got to realize, hey, a fresh guy is better than me right now for this play. Yeah, I mean, you can't be too selfish, you know. Uh, me at 80% and Cleshawn at 100%, I mean, I take Cleshawn all day. It looks like Dante has been playing pretty darn well lately. Yeah. Does that show on the film? Talk about him a little bit. Oh, yeah, man. Dante is a great player, you know, one of, one of our top DBs, and, you know, we respect that guy a lot. He, he And he's the youngest one. You know that plays under us, but you know he, he plays bigger than what he is, and he he's he's been making a lot of plays lately. I, lo I love the way he's been playing. As beat up as you guys were at the end of the Colorado State game uh, on defense, you feel like it's taken a toll. You guys are facing so many plays and playing at such a fast tempo all the time, and it, is it wearing the defense out a little bit? Yeah, it, it wears us out, but then you know that's what we have the trainers for. We get in the training room as much as possible, wear those trainers out, and get ready to play back on the field. We're, we're banged up just like everybody else in the country. By the end of that game, you looked around at who was on the field with you. A little strange to see what yeah. the group that was out there. I mean, no, nah, not really, because everybody gets reps in practice. You, you're getting reps with everybody in practice, so it's just the same thing in the game. Um, kind of quietly, the last three, four weeks, you guys have had to start a true freshman at middle linebacker. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing out of Tanner Vallejo? Out Young there? Tanner, man, I, I love him. You know, he always he, he's a quiet guy in the locker room, but in, in, on the field, you know, he makes a lot of plays, plays with a lot of heart, and I, I love the way he plays. I mean, pretty unusual to have a true freshman in a spot like that. Yeah. Uh, he handled it pretty well out there? Yeah, he's handled it pretty well. You know, he picked up on the speed of the game and the knowledge of the game real fast, picked up on all the calls, doesn't make too many mistakes, so. He's playing fast. What do you do all day for 8.15 at night? Focus up. I mean, you know, kind of relax. Uh, team meal. And just, you know, get your mind right for the game. Would you rather play at like 1 o'clock right when you get up? Or do you like these night games? Or? I, I love I love early games, but night games, I mean, it, it doesn't matter really. Talk, talking with Dylan uh, just a couple days ago, but um, 
He said that he didn't really realize that you guys were on the field uh, for 109 defensive plays, but then he looked at the so stat sheet. Did, did you do the same thing and have, have a reaction? 109 plays? Yeah, 109 plays is a lot. We, we really didn't notice it in the game, but afterwards, after the game, you realize, like, man, I'm pretty tired, I'm pretty, you know, banged up. And then when we get the stat sheet, it said 109 plays, and he was like, okay, that's why I felt like that. Do you got to get more stops on third down, or what do you do to make the you know, you guys have the, You guys have the ability to make that number come down, right? Yeah, we do. You know, we got we to gotta stand up on those third downs, and that's just going to make it easier on us. But then that puts the offense back on the field, and if they're scoring points, then we're going to be right back on the field. So it kind of is going to have to even out a little bit. I know that time between snaps is always critical, but when they're going so fast, how much more critical is it now in order to get everybody sorted out fast? Uh, it's very critical. I mean, the, the uh, guys in the booth got to get the call down to the guys on the field, and they got to get the call to us, and then we got to communicate it to each other, depending on the formation and whatever the situation is. Has anything like that been different this year because you've seen more teams that run this tempo, or is is it, is it been, has it always been this way? Uh, it's not always been this way. Well, for me, yeah, because I just started playing last year, so everybody was pretty much getting into the fat, going fast thing. So it's pretty much the same as last year for me. Coach K was saying, uh, you know, the one thing he's still harping on is turnovers, and you guys are negative in turnovers, which is, never happens around here. Uh, what, what do you do to try to turn that around? I mean, we just got to force them. We, we, we can't like step back. We got to go get them. Nobody's going to give us turnovers. We got to go take them. It's been, uh, you know, it's Wyoming. Who you got hurt against last year? Been right about a year. Mm -hmm. you, you feel? I mean, through the last few months, are you still getting better? Are you still still getting stronger out there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I'm still getting better. You know, I still I still think I'm progressing during the season. My knee feels good, so I'm ready. I'm ready to roll. What'd they tell you? A year to is a year kind of the, the key yeah. point where it sort of starts. You know, you kind of put it all behind you. Or? Yeah, they, what they told me, the doctor told me, it's two years two where years. you actually forget you had surgery. But I, I feel, I feel great. Like I haven't had surgery right now, so uh, I think he did. A, the surgeon did a great <laughs> job. I know you're not a draft analyst or anything, but you played against NFL quarterbacks last year, and then certainly faced a lot of prospects this year. Where does Brett Smith rank in that in that atmosphere? I think he's pretty high. I mean, like I said, the dude is mobile and and. and the college game is changing, so that, I think that means the NFL is going to have to change with quarterbacks like Russell Wilson and Colin Kaepernick. I, I think Brett is uh, fit, fit right in. And then uh, finally, for me, you know, just, just again getting back to that up tempo offense. I mean, how much how much tougher is it to play defense these days? I mean, facing that that style. Just it, it comes back to conditioning. I mean, if we, if we were well conditioned, I think we'll be all right. And then you know we rotate pretty much, so I think we should be fine. All right, yeah.